In fact, for some students, uh, starting with zero background in CIT is better eh? because then you start from a very good foundation. Eh? Good day, Technoys, and welcome to the third installment of our Discovery Journey series of 2021. So in our first talk show, you were able to get to know our college ambassadors as they open themselves up to how it is like to be Ates and Kuyas of CIT. And just yesterday, you were able to join our talk show live with the different SPS heads who gave you a quick glimpse on the different services that you can benefit during your stay in CIT University. And today, we move on with our journey and get to know our Dean. So for our first salvo, we have the privilege to have with us today the Dean of the College of Computer Studies. So ladies and gentlemen, Technoise, let us all welcome the feisty but very friendly Dean of the College of Computer Studies, Dr. Cherry Lynn Santa Romana. Hello everyone. Hi. How are you? Um, we are good and we are happy to, to have you with us no, as our Thank very you. first guest for the Dean's Journey. How are you, ma'am? How have you been for the last year? It was very busy no? in the beginning of the, when we transitioned uh, and we started to craft the Made for Learners framework. It was a very, very busy uh, you know, first few months. But I think I was able to adjust. No? Um, this is the normal for me now, no? staying at home, you know, <laughs> the office in the other room, you know. I think I'm starting to like it. The work from home setup. Yes, yeah, the work from home setup. Yeah. So for those who do not know, Mom Cherry is actually one of um, those who really um, how do you call it? made made from the very beginning. So made for learners is um, her brainchild. So we have her to credit for it as one of those who really um thought about it thought about the concept and even thought of the name from the very start so have you been vaccinated ma'am by the way yeah yeah i'm so thankful not to be i'm fully vaccinated oh, i think that was, yeah this this month i uh, first week of june i had my second dose of pfizer God, it was really good yeah yeah it was really good <laughs> because a lot of people are a lot of people were asking me no what vaccine, mm -hmm. you know? It was really fast, no? It was in a period of three weeks, basically, I was fully va vaccinated. Wow, that's good, that's good. I'm so, so thankful. Yeah, and hopefully, ma'am, if I do get vaccinated soon, maybe we can do this now, face-to-face, <laughs> -face, no? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, right. So, uh -oh, so, so our first question for today, ma'am, so um, were there changes in the CS and IT curricula for the past year or maybe in the year to come considering that the new enrollees that we have now have already completed their um, senior high school okay so let me start by saying that you know all uh programs basically degree programs are governed by what we call chad memorandum order so for cs and it uh we are governed by the chad memorandum order 25 series of 2015 so I'm actually part of the Chad Technical Committee for Computer Science. So I'm part of that group of people who created this, uh, basically the CMO 25. Now, it was actually released, uh, I think it was August 2015 when it was released. Uh, but because I have a draft of that particular CMO, so prior to 2015, we already conducted curriculum review no, because we wanted to basically already revise the curriculum to follow that Chad CMO. So we did a lot of consultation with our existing students. We did consultation with alumni. We had industry fora. We presented the draft of the curriculum based on the CHAD CMO. At the same time, complying with the previous CMO. And I just want to emphasize that. And so we tried to comply with this previous CMO at, as well as this upcoming CMO. So I think we were able to create a very solid um, curriculum back then in 2015. So we deployed it for the last batch of the non-senior high school of the pre-K to 12. Anna. And then so I, it was a pretty solid curriculum already. You know? I know because the, uh, the graduates of that batch of students, you know, we top the top seat, the Korea's test of practical competency in IIT. Our students then won various competitions. Um, so it was a pretty solid curriculum already. 
Uh, and then we even consulted those batch of students and asked them about their experience with the curriculum. And we actually learned a lot of other things. Like they said that they needed more mathematics in order to do AI for the computer science, that this particular course would have been better if it was offered earlier. So keeping all of those things in mind, uh, as well as the, the changes in the for the senior high school, and you know, because... Senior high school students basically take a lot of general education in the senior high school. So we had a lot of room. No? Instead of 54 units of GE, uh, 36 units, uh, it was reduced no, to 36 units. So we have 18 units basically. No? So it was already a pretty solid curriculum. And then we arranged it better than the previous one based on the comments of the students. And then we have these 18 units that we put into more practical. You know? So we strengthened, uh, for example, database systems one and two. We added uh, courses to strengthen the, the foundation courses. So I'm actually very, very excited about the, this batch of students who will graduate next year. You know? They are very strong, no? technically, very strong in the foundations already. A lot of them, in fact, are already working you know? Um as early as, you know, second, some of them are working as early as second year, and a lot of them started working during the pandemic. Imagine that. And they have not even graduated. Enough. So just, just goes to show you know, how strong the curriculum is based on the foundation and the theoretical side. So I'm so excited for next year. And to all of the companies out there who are listening, you go to CIT and our graduates are available. You can hire them. You know? And I guarantee that, that they're very strong in terms and of I think human practical knowledge. Yes, and it really helps that you consult with the industry and our alumni. Yes, no, uh, especially for Anna, uh, because we have a very strong IT. Uh, IT is broader, uh, it's very clear uh, that it's more applied, more practical. But for computer science, the, the struggle is you have to be truthful to the theoretical and mathematical nature of computer science. So the struggle with computer science is that how do you give them the practical side at the same time? Anna? And I think we were able to do that because we consulted with the industry. And so what we did is we strengthened the curriculum aside from focusing on its natural, theoretical, and yes. research-oriented side. We strengthened it in terms of the practical side because the industry and our alumni are saying, we know that this is not the area of computer science, but this is needed in the industry. And so we added those as extra courses. So. So that they can become software engineers, basically. No? That's the target. So that they can work as software engineers, basically. It was strengthened that way. Yes. And then you also mentioned, ma'am, about having a strong foundation. So how about those students who enroll or who are about to enroll in first year but do not really have a strong mathematical or computer background from the schools where they came from? How do you deal with it? How do you... Uh, teachers or instructors deal with, with those students who are in need of more help? Okay, so basically, no, um, for senior high school, uh, for the BSIT program, we don't really expect any prior background. In fact, we do not expect any particular stand. Uh, in fact, uh, for example, if you're an ABM graduate, we appreciate that going into BSIT because then you have knowledge about business management and so on, which will really help you if you're a BSIT graduate because you're supposed to develop systems, for example, and you have to understand the organization so that you can develop systems for them. But on the other hand, for BS Computer Science, we expect that you're uh, a STEM from a STEM strand because of the mathematical nature of computer science. But if you're not from a STEM stand, then you need to take pre-calculus for STEM in the first semester. That's the only thing that we require because computer science has uh, advanced calculus courses you know, in the program. But anyway, you know, I also get a lot of those questions. And you know, mom, I do not have programming background. Mom, I do not have very strong, for example, computer literacy skills. You know? And we know that because we get a lot of students from different, for example, provinces here in the Philippines from public schools wherein they don't really have, you know, uh, we're not exposed not that much. So we do not expect those. So we have incorporated practical courses. We have this modern tools course, for example, in the first semester that would train you um, and it will level the playing field. Basically, if you already know, you just have to bear with us and prove that you already know by getting a 5.0. But if you do not know, then we will level you up so that you can be at par with the rest of your classmates. But for programming, we really do not assume any prior background, I'm telling you, because even the STEM stand has no programming. Eh? But if you already know a pro programming well and good, 
But I hope that we can train you na, na to do things properly because, you know, there are principles in programming that you have to learn. So, in fact, for some students, uh, starting with zero background in CIT is better eh? because then you start from a very good foundation. Eh? Rather than, for example, you have these bad habits that you learn, for example, on your own. Eh, no? So, at sa, uh, I, you know, um, I've handled students with zero programming background. And if you're taught by, by a very good teacher, you eh, know, um, after one semester, you're all at the same level, I would think. So no need to be scared for all of those students without programming background. No need to be scared. You're welcome to enroll in IET and CS and CIT. And we will take care of you know, to make sure that you can, you can level up. Yeah, because I think that's what other students needed to hear, ma'am. Because they know what, um, what CCS in CIT is, how it is like, its recognitions and all, and how great your graduates are. So maybe some of them are scared that they might not be able to survive. But hearing that from you, that you would better appreciate a clean canvas. <laughs> yes, that's right. In fact, I'm telling you now, uh, in the first batch of senior high school graduates, I handled their first programming course. And some of them have zero background because I know that they don't have programming background. You know? But then, you know, after one semester, they actually uh, we, they actually won and you know, got into the top 10 of the Philippine Programming Challenge. I, I, I think you remember this, right? Mm -hmm. First-year students getting into the top 10 of the Philippine Programming Challenge, 40 first-year students, a lot of them zero. But then after a few months, you know, because it's problem solving, eh? it's basically problem solving. Uh, uh, technology is, you know, it's fast changing, but we're going to train your problem solving skills. And problem solving, it's agnostic. You know? It does not really rely on any particular technology. You know? It's built in, you know, so there's no problem about that. Okay. So for those who are looking for a sign, <laughs> Mom Cherry's answer is already the sign. So you're, you're yeah. very welcome to enroll in. CIT and in the College of CCS in particular. So let's go to the next question, ma'am, because a lot of people, you know, are learning from, from B short courses and from other, you know, other sources. So I just have a question. In the industry, what do you think is more important? Would it be college diploma or the skills? Yeah, no, it's a very tricky question, very difficult question and uh, uh, to answer but of course coming from the academy i would say it would have to be the diploma right but the diploma should be coupled with the skills now because the diploma is basically the reason why you have the diploma it's a mark that you have learned something right the student outcomes basically that you possess all of these things and not uh, like problem solving skills critical thinking skills and all of these soft skills like communication skills and so on and so forth but in the field of it because there's a very high demand so a lot of companies you know because of the difficulty of hiring, they would hire for the skills instead of the diploma, no? which is really sad. And a lot of companies have already said that Google, for example, Microsoft, they have said that they will hire, for example, uh, students without diplomas or those are non-college graduates and in the company for as long as they can exhibit the skills. But it's a sad thing. And it's a sad thing that is happening that there are graduates with diplomas but cannot be hired. And the industries would tell you that. That's why we always listen to the industry, right? In order to address the industry academe gap. Because what's the purpose of your existence if your graduates are not hired? So to do, but we have a lot of students like that. And um, that's why I'm scared. Anna. If our students start working, sometimes I'm scared that they might not finish the, the degree program because they're already working. So we have students like that, that they are already working. So they stop studying because their priority is they, they are earning enough already. But the thing is, um, the skills might get you in the company. For example, you are hired. But then in, inside the company, for example, there's a promotion already. And so you have here a group of people, all with the same skills, and then they need to promote somebody. They will promote the one with a diploma, right? And so the realization will come in. And so we have a lot of graduates like that have been working in the industry already. And then they will come back and try to get a degree. No? It's a good thing because we have ETF, but that is maybe a subject for another discussion, right? Because at some point you realize that you need a diploma, right? So it's better to get the diploma as early as possible and try to prove also that with that diploma, you have the skills or not to prove that you deserve that diploma. That's a, that's a good answer, ma'am. Maybe that also answers the, the question among students right now, no? because some students believe that grades don't matter, you know, like that. It's the skills. But I think it's it should come hand in hand, both. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Now, um, you mentioned about the grades, and uh, um, how do you, you know? Just the other day, I was talking to an alumnus, and uh, I chatted with him because I saw that he posted something that I transferred to a company, and I told him, "Why did you transfer to the company?" And then he said, "Because it's double the salary, ma." So I go, "Wow!" Because you transferred to this company because the it, he started working as a new graduate in a company. After a few years, he transferred to a company, double the salary. And then now he transferred again, double the salary. And in between, he got promoted. So he was telling me, wow, the salary for CS and IT graduates, it, it's exponential. You know, it doubles every every time you transfer. And then the, just last Saturday, I heard, uh, you know, the, the president of the CEO of one big software company. And she said the same thing, Anna, that double, quadruple the salary. If you want to go into IT, it's double, quadruple the salary. So I go, wow, how did you do that? Yes, ma'am. And I was even promoted in between, he said. So I go, really? And we were competing with summa cum laude graduates from other schools, and we were just ordinary graduates from CIT. No? So these students that we have, a lot of them, they get hired before graduation, but they are not really cum laude or summa cum laude graduates. You know? But I'm still confident because I know that they have the skills, Anna. But, you know, I think that grades are important because it means something, right? It means that you have the skills. That's why you, you get those high grades. You know? But what I do not like is, what is more embarrassing is to be a cum laude graduate and yet not being able to exhibit the skills. You know? mm -hmm. So even though grades are important, in CIT, we make sure that if you graduate as a cum laude, you really, you know, not just, oh yeah, it's not just about the grades. You can really exhibit it because even the ordinary graduates, you know, have the skills. How much more if you are a cum laude or a magna cum laude? Definitely. Uh, you're more well-rounded, I would think, Anna, being a cum laude because some of our students, the problem is they only focus on the computer courses, for example. They don't focus on the other courses. No? So that's why they don't end up as cum laude, even though... They have these technical skills on the IT or computer science side. But both are important, you know. I would think that both are important. You have to start to get the grades. You have to make sure that you deserve those grades. Not just, you know, uh, yes, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also think, ma'am, that, you know, the grades also shows other dimensions of the students, like being diligent. Being, yeah, that's uh, right. That's a right. Time manager, like that. Yeah, and, you know, you're well-rounded. Yes, yes. Uh, it shows that you're well-rounded uh, uh, in all aspects, basically, even the soft skills, even the, you know, communication skills, the humanity side, the art side, all of yes. that, uh, it means you're well-rounded if, uh, if you have high grades and you graduate us with honors, for example. But it does not necessarily have to be the end-all and be-all of, of a student. Yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> okay, so... um. Ma'am, we know that um, the College of Computer Studies is a center of excellence in IT education. It is a multi-recognized college. Uh, you yourself, um, Ma'am Larmi, the, the chair of IT, you, you, are, um, you, you have high positions in, in your professional organizations. You have a high caliber list of um, instructors and faculty. But um, is there more to, to CCS, ma'am, than those recognitions, than the trophies and and the plaques. <laughs> you know, you already said it, Anna. You know, I think um, it's very difficult, Anna. It's very difficult to maintain those awards. I just would like to say that, Anna. We are a Chad Center of Excellence in IT Education. We got that award since 2007. Now we are the first institution in Region 7 to have gotten Pakokowa Level 4 accreditation. It's the highest. And our BSIT is Level 3 accreditation. But if you think about it, uh, what made it possible is basically the people that we have, ano? like you see, high caliber faculty members. I want to give honor to them. Ano? Um, we would not have been able to achieve those things ano? without um, without the people ano? behind CCS. Um, they are highly qualified. They can be deans and department chairs in other universities, but they are in CCS. Ano? Um, and I'm very thankful to them. I just want to mention that. Ano? So, um. But I think what's not getting recognition for me, and I'm very, very proud about it, is it would be our graduates and our alumni. Because, you know, you can be a center of excellence. I don't know. No, um, it has to be both. But no, you have to deserve that center of excellence. And I think the most important outcome would be the graduates for me. Mm -mm. The quality of the graduates. No, because um, that's in name only. No, but unfortunately, because the criteria is so broad, no, you cannot really pinpoint 
that, for example, the most important thing would be the quality of the students and the alumni. I have been fighting for that. Now, how can we give, for example, more importance? Because for me, it does not matter. Eh? You might have very bad laboratories. You might have very bad facilities. But if your graduates are great, it does not really matter. Eh? The facilities that you have, it does, those things do not matter. Eh? The most important thing would be the outcome. And the biggest outcome of an institution would be the graduates. So ako, I'm very, very proud that we have tried really, really hard uh, to be able to produce the kind of graduates that we have. Ano? For our BS Computer Science, because it's very small, almost all of them get job offers, multiple job offers before graduation. The same is true for the BSIT, except that it's broader, it's bigger. And because it's bigger, um, about, but, you know, almost all of them get hired, not uh, maybe about 40%, 30 to 40% get job offers before graduation, but about 90% get, would get hired three months, within three months after graduation, which is also a very, very good thing, right? To think that we have a very big number. So if there's an award for that, I would be happy to get that award. <laughs> More than anything else, I would be happy to get an award because it's the most important thing. It will change the lives of those students. Eh? You know, I've seen a lot of lives change. Anna, and that basically for me, that's what keeps me going. Anna. Uh, Every time I see successful alumni, that's my, that's the fuel. Anna. That's the fuel that keeps us going in CCS. Yeah, I, I remember um, last Last year, no, you were releasing those posters about um, CCS alumni, even CCS couples. And by that alone, I think that equals to the certificates and the plaques, ma'am, that you have in your office. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's right. That's right. I, that's why I was so excited. You know, I personally tried to contact those alumni. And to all our alumni out there, you, know, you are welcome to submit your testimonials to us. Ano. Uh, it will help. You know, you know that uh, it will help a lot of young students, you know, we have a lot of siblings, siblings studying in CIT. No? I, I think you saw that too. No? For me, it's a sign. Eh? It's a very good sign that, you know, it's like customers coming back, right? Why would you recommend your younger siblings to take CSNIT in CIT if you did not have a good experience, you know, unless they do not really want to take CSNIT. We have a lot of siblings um, studying in CIT. No? It's because of the success of the 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 older ones now you know in CCS they are successful they are well placed in the industry very successful alumni you know? and that's why I always look back eh, and try to read those testimonials if ever I feel frustrated for example I would look at all <laughs> of those alumni and that's basically you know inspires us basically it's an inspiration you know, to see that yeah we're claiming it eh? we're claiming that uh, we have a hand in making those students successful and their families have changed, their lives have changed because they got a good education in CIT University. That's correct. Now, actually, I, I know some of them and I can really see that, you know, they're very, very successful. So sometimes I, I get to think, am I in the right track? <laughs> 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 you mentioned a while ago that their salaries are growing exponentially. Yeah, it's growing exponentially, you know, higher than their teachers, but that's okay. <laughs> You know, higher than their teachers. And I hope that, you know, even our teachers here, you know, they could work in the industry and get those salaries. But, you know, another thing, uh, that's why I'm thankful that they are in CCS when they could have those other opportunities uh, outside. It's the, it's the puso, ma'am. It's the passion in, in teaching. I, I, even you, ma'am, I know that you have the skills, you can be hired anywhere, but for you to stay in CIT and nurture a lot more students to become like you, I think that's, that's the heart of it. That's the heart of CCS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, Anna, that's the purpose. Anna. Yeah, I, you know, I think personally, you know, it's really, you know, it might sound corny, you know, but I think that's the purpose. <laughs> you have to find your purpose. And, you know, you have to, it's the Ikigai, basically, you know. We yes. have an Ikigai center. For me, this is my Ikigai, you know. To be able to do something that you're passionate about, to be able to, you know, make, you know, that there's a meaning to what you're doing at the same time. And uh, yeah, it's very rare. So you have to find your happiness there, you know. <laughs> so, yung kami naman, you know, obviously I look happy naman, you know. Every time I talk about <laughs> alumni, you know, you can see the happiness in me, you know. So I make sure that, you know, um, I try to get in touch with them also, you know, at the same time, you know, how they are. Because, you know, it, th those are very good examples of the things that, of why we do the things that we do in, here in CIT. So, since we're talking about Ikigai, ma, maybe there are some students out there who, uh, who are still looking for the possible path 
for their ikigai or who might be having second thoughts as, as of the moment if they're gonna really pursue CS or IT or maybe other courses which is which are computer related or maybe not necessarily computer related but um, what would be your your final words for them to those who are um, viewing us right now you know I I always believe in you know, I'm a how do you say this I'm really a proponent for computing education eh? it's because that I know no based on experience that it will change their lives now if they study very well. For example, they study in CIT. Uh, we promise to train them if they will do that. You know, I always tell the students, I promise if you will do your part, we will make you successful. That's always the promise. Anna. But the students should do their part now. I've seen a lot of lives change. Eh? If I don't see those, you know, if I didn't see that and if I don't see that happening, I wouldn't push for computer science education or IT education, for example. It, this is a great equalizer, you know. It's a great equalizer. Why am I saying that? Because computing is brain power. You need your brains. It's scary because you have to think. Our motto is think, think. So um, it's brain power. So the brains of other nationalities, we all have the same brain. So you, we can compete with the rest of them across the world. If they're programming in Java, we can program in Java too. If they're programming in Python, we can do that too because it's just brains, you know? The computers that they have is the same computers that we have. So the Filipinos can compete in computing. We can compete with the rest of them. We are not, you know, we are not uh, disadvantaged. You know? That's why I'm pushing for this. Eh? We don't need that much equipment. We don't need anything else. We need our brains. We need to think. So if you want to be competitive with the rest of them, then really, you know, uh, computing courses, you know, it's for you. Don't even think about it. Uh, if you do not want to believe in that, and as having a speaker name last Saturday, just think about quadruple salary, you know. <laughs> it's a pandemic-free occupation, and uh, you can change the lives of your family. And at the same time, enjoy the things that you do. Why are you enjoying the things that you do? Because you're creating something. Imagine developing those apps, helping other people. I, it would give you, you know, a sense of accomplishment and purpose, aside from the salary, of course. <laughs> Bonus na lang yung salary. Bonus yung salary nga, eh, because, you know, the, there's really a meaning, eh, you know, a lot of the... Just imagine, you know, without technology, what will happen to us in this pandemic. It's the technology that enabled everything to work. Without technology, we're, we're gone. That's why the IT people are saying we are frontliners too. You would have been able to do the things yeah. that you have done without the IT professionals all over the world. Wow, that has, this has been a very fun and meaningful conversation, ma'am. At least we also got to see the the personal side of Dean Cherry, you no know, personal side when it comes to, to the professional. So before we end, ma'am, I just have a quick question since we have not been to CIT for over a year. Uh, is there a particular CIT spot, ma'am, that you miss the most or maybe your favorite CIT spot? I'm not so sure. Like maybe the s and building. I think it's the s and building. And the s and building, it's where all the students, you know, um, they stay there. We actually hold our parties there. And uh, usually uh, we have the freshman fun day in the science and technology uh, study area. We have the freshman fun day there. We have our Christmas party there. And I'm sure a lot of CCS students, they miss the study area. If I want to talk to the students, I go out there. I sit in the study table. I talk with the students, you know. So I miss the study area of the s and building, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Okay, so um, once again, thank you very much, Mom Cherry, for gracing the first episode of our Discovery Journey uh, series, uh, installment three. So um, thank you, and we hope that you stay safe, Mom, wherever you are. I'm glad again that you're vaccinated, and we hope to see you very soon. So I'm um, together, Mom. Let us say goodbye to our viewers. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening.